There are an unlimited number of reasons why the stock market could fall and yet it has been going up in a straight line. Profits are fantastic, the economy is booming, and the tooth fairy will leave you a quarter under your pillow tonight. Wait a second, let's get back to reality. The Fed must bear responsibility for this entire cycle. They did this, which is why investors have been motivated to make them continue with QE4. But what happens with the inevitable crash? That's unavoidable and yet they pretend as if they can prevent it. How foolish. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to talk about many factors here. We're going to look at the repo crisis. We're going to talk about what's happening with the trade deal. I want to give you some updates on some indicators as well. And I also want to talk about the nine states in recession in the next six months. That is going to be towards the end of the video. So if you are really interested in that part, you can fast forward to it. But let me go through this here because I'm going to lead up into that. Let's begin by taking a look at the trade deal. You've been hearing about this supposedly January. January 15th, they're going to sign on the dot. What I want to know about this trade deal, and I've brought this up many times before, is what exactly are they agreeing to? Is that information going to become public? The whole deal, everything, top to bottom, I want to know. Is that going to become public on January 15th or maybe at some point in the future? Are they going to allow the public to see it? Because the reports I have seen have suggested no, they are not going to let the public see it, which is extremely problematic for me. But let's just see January 15th. In this article here out of the Global Times, it's basically saying that the Chinese side has not made any announcement whatsoever about this deal, about them signing, about them agreeing to anything whatsoever. But we'll see because they also do suggest that usually just in the days leading up to that happening, then they make the formal announcement and then we'll see. So January 15th, that's where we're at today. I'm going to forward into the next one, which basically talks about the actual buying of agriculture. The report underlines China's desire to protect its farmers at a time when it is under pressure to buy billions of dollars more of U.S. agricultural goods to calm a prolonged trade issue, although its grain imports have been well below quota levels in recent years. Traders and analysts said that the announcement appeared to be aimed at local concerns as Beijing gears up to buy more U.S. agricultural goods. And what are we talking about here? At the bottom, one of the higher level people on the Chinese side had said the quota is offered to global markets and we won't adjust it for one country. We'll see what that all means as we head towards January 15th and we get the information and we know what's in the deal, then we can talk further about this. I just wanted to point it out really quickly before moving on to the Fed repos. Obviously, there's still demand as I've been talking about this exhaustively over the last while. Here, another $100 billion was needed and what's interesting about this is that leading up into the end of the year, we were told it was going to be crazy, it was going to be intense, and then it actually started to wane a bit, but there was still demand, and they said that was because of year end. Now we are in the new year, and the problem is clearly still there. It's still present, it's still apparent, and at $100 billion, it doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. This top paragraph out of this article from The Hill is talking about Irving Fisher. He was the preeminent economist at the time. He was the go-to guy and he had to say something that ruined his entire career. Two days before the start of the 1929 stock market crash, Irving Fisher was positively bullish on US stock market because in his view, the US economy fundamentals were strong, the stock market was undervalued and stock prices had reached, quote, what looks like a permanent high plateau. Didn't work out so good and his timing was incredibly horrible. And what happened? Right here we have the top person at the time saying this right at the worst possible time. It just shows you that nobody can predict what's coming. Look at the repo operations going on here. This is what nobody really expected to occur, and yet here we are. We're dealing with this, and they had to pump in all of this money, and you can see their balance sheet expanding. I think on Thursday, we're gonna get the new numbers, essentially showing that we're headed towards 4.2 trillion. If not this week, most likely next week, we'll see it head above $4.2 trillion. Looking at the overnight operations, looking at the term repos, regardless, we're seeing that there's heavy demand there. That's all I really want to point out. 
This is just showing you the Fed balance sheet changes versus the S&P 500 real investment advice. Put this together. And I think there's another one here that I brought up as well. Just giving you an idea of what's been happening over this period, how they are directly correlated. And I usually show the chart where they're on top of each other. But this is another way to see it. And I like that actually, because it gives me a new perspective. On the y-axis, we're seeing the net change to the balance sheet, positive periods. And at the bottom, it's just given us the date going back from the beginning of 2016 up until today. And there's been this massive influx of liquidity. And why? We're being told everything's fine. So what exactly is going on underneath all of this? Well, we know that there is a big problem. I do believe that we had a few major events that took place. So if you look at it, the financial crisis really exposed the flaws in the financial system. And the financial system basically died. And what we had was... The government's coming in, bailing out all the institutions and taking on their debt, taking on all of their bad books, everything that they could get, their toxic assets, everything. They took it all. And it doesn't go away, of course, the rot is still there. However, we were able to get the stock markets to come back up. We had people being rehired, of course, but the economy is a lot different today because people more than ever before are getting what they call this, you know, gig economy and so on. People are taking on two and three jobs all the time. It's very common today. And of course, the markets came up and the economy, you could say at, at the really worst point during the financial crisis compared to perhaps 2013, 2014 timeframe. Okay, definitely. It looked better. There's, there's no doubt about it. Then we take what occurred in 2015, 2016, where the Chinese market started to, uh, you know, really unravel as well as the economy in China. And then things came down from there. There was the earnings recession that some would say in, in certain areas and a general recession started to unfold fold. Then, of course, this really prolonged things for a while, and they thought maybe this is the beginning of the next recession, but things were able to come back up as soon as the ECB, the BOE, the BOJ, and everybody else started to react to it, and we know the result of that. 2017 was a fantastic year, basically all around the place. 2018 was absolutely terrible, starting where nobody at all predicted, and that was the VIX. The VIX killed everything, and that's where we're sitting at today. Look at a potential crisis that could unfold further and further in places nobody expects. Nobody expected the repo crisis to happen. Yes, they've been able to control it, that's for sure, but it shows you that the cracks are there. The cracks are definitely there. And the Federal Reserve has to intervene all the time in order to be that player that is supposed to be normally just, you know, all done by the market, by market players, the primary dealer, and how everything else works out, but it's not working that way right now it's broken and even though we were told so many times before don't worry everything's going to be fine it clearly isn't because we're in the new year and they're still having these problems they say they're going to have to do it all the way until april so we'll see if it goes beyond that Weekly changes to the Fed balance sheet versus the S&P 500. Just giving us idea, uh, this idea from September all the way to present on this bar chart, giving you just another way to look at it. Now, this actually surprised me. It was out of Bloomberg. Tamed optimism. Wall Street strategists are the least bullish on the stock market going back all the way to 2004. Now, that to me is surprising because of everything we are seeing. Now, I know what a lot of these investors are saying is that, yes, the stock market's going to grow but just not as much as we are used to. Number one, we've had one hell of a bull market going from March 2009 up until the present. It's long, it's extended, and we've had a lot of QE at this point. We also have 2019 being a fantastic year, so it's hard to really follow up after all of that. We have the quantitative easing that has largely run its course unless they you know, really accelerate that. They have to do more and more and more, and we have interest rates at rock bottom. There's really nowhere else they can go except if they go into the negative. But as we have seen in places like Japan and Europe, where it doesn't really have the effect that it is intended on. So even those out there who are bullish are not really extremely bullish. There are a few, of course, but just the general consensus there. Mortgage rates fall further as buyers rush in to the first open houses of 2020. When you have the mortgage rates declining, people will refinance. People will be buying more homes. There's no doubt 
thought about it, but there is of course a ceiling. If we drop all the mortgage rates right down to the bottom, like we have seen in Denmark, I think it was, this could spur some more people to buy, but you just expanded that load. You just make things worse for people in the end. It's not doing them a favor. They have a lot of money that they, oh, they're just gonna really make things more expensive. The houses ultimately get more expensive as a result. That's not a good thing. Then we have this. Philadelphia Fed released it. If you want to check it out, the link is in the description. I don't want to read this all to you every single line, but essentially what we're looking at is the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia released the leading indexes for the 50 states for November 2019. The indexes are a six-month forecast of the state coincident indexes. 41 state coincident indexes are projected to grow over the next six months. Nine are expected to decrease. I'm going to zoom in over here just to give you a better look at this so you can see it for yourself. If you want to know all the states, I mean, you can see it here on the chart. The legend is towards the bottom there. I think we're having serious problems right now with manufacturing and that is showing up in the ISM. I've presented you that data before and I think this is correlated, but of course we don't know until this happens. Let's go back to this. We'll revisit it in six months. I'm going to be covering the ISM data, the other PMIs, the market PMIs and so on to see which direction they go. We're at that pivotal moment now. I just wanted to bring this to you really quickly. There it is. If you want to see it, pause the video or go to the link in the description. I just wanted to finish it off, but here's another chart that just goes along with that. And you could see nine states are projected to contract over the next six months. Another way to look at it, I'm gonna end the video there. If you found it informative, hit the thumbs up button. When you click the like button, you're supporting this channel. That's all you gotta do. Nothing else. If you just give me that like button, I'm really appreciative of that. Thank you. If you want to learn about business, if you want to learn about passive income, making money, this is for you. I created a free, 100% free e-course for everybody to learn. If you want to check it out, you'll be one of 5,000 people that is in this course right here. And I made it free. Unlike all those others out there, this is free. The AmazonGPS.com. If you are interested in the financial system, but you don't want all that jargon, you don't want all that mess that gets in the way, I created these two books to make it simple, to make it easy, and yet give you so much detail like I do in my videos. Check out these two books at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, that's at themoneygps.com. Have you seen this video yet? If not, definitely check it out. I think it's really important. Click on it and I'll see you there.